around the world. Sit back, relax, and get ready for your weekly dose of MMA coverage. And now, coming out of Glasgow, Scotland, the Alba MMA Podcast. Damn, son, isn't that enough? Yeah, so the Album MMA podcast is now with Josh Emmett. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so um, we're just going to ask you a few questions today, man. And uh, the first f- thing, uh, basically the last time we seen you in action was against Jeremy Stevens. You know, a very, very tough fight, very game opponent. But uh, I seen a, an interview on the, your interview on the MMA hour. And you're obviously, you know, you weren't in the best of shape after that fight. So first off, how is your health now and how hard was the process of recovery? Uh, yeah, it's, it's coming along uh, pretty well now. You know, it's, uh, it's been a, a tough year, that's for sure. Um, just because I had, you know, just all the, the injuries that I took from that, that fight, you know, just all the facial fractures and yeah. uh, some other issues that I was uh, going, going through. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's been a, been a tough year. It's been hard to, uh, you know, kind of over- overcome those things because I was even dealing with like, you know, vertigo besides just like the broken bones and stuff. I, I had really bad vertigo and I'd wake up mm-hmm. in the room spinning and it, it made me, you know, just worried me as if like, man, am I ever going to be able to fight again? Is this going to get better? But, you know, just like anything with time, it'll heal. And uh, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of therapists. I'm lucky that I have a lot of, uh, you know, just like, people in my life that are our therapists and doctors and, and things like that, that have kind of guided me along the way because without them, you know, I, I kind of would have been lost. So I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people that have, uh, you know, helped tremendously in my recovery and, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for them. And, and now I'm, uh, I'm getting back to practices and, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel good and, and, I uh, can't wait to get back in there. That was yeah, really good to hear, man. Yeah, really, really look, good to hear. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you back. Now that you've kind of made that process of recovery, looking back to that fight, obviously Jeremy Stevens landed that illegal knee. And I, I know you've said that looking back, you kind of felt slightly, I don't know what the words were, frustrated that the referee, the referee could have stopped it at that point and taken a point off Jeremy Stevens or at least given him a warning. Now that you've made that process of recovery, looking back, do you still feel similarly? Do you still feel frustrated? Or are you kind of just moving past it at this point? Yeah, I'm just kind of moving past it. It's, uh, you know, it, there, there's a lot of things I learned in the fight. And, and I've said before in other interviews, it's, uh, you know, like the first round when I knocked him down. And uh, I was kind of, you know, that was the first round. I was thinking in my head, well, I have four more rounds. I didn't want to punch myself out. I didn't want to, you know, gas out. But, you know, mm-hmm. moving forward the next fight, if I get in that same position, I'm always in great shape. I'm not going to, you know, gas out. I, ha- I have heart that I'm not going to stop unless, you know, you, unless you put me out. And uh, so I wish I would have done things different, kind of jumped on him the way he did me in the second round, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what I've learned. But as far as the, uh, like, the outcome of it, yeah, the, yeah, it's still, you know, it's, it's still irritating. Um, just, like, from a, a rule standpoint, you know, there's rules set for sure. in place for a reason. So if, if it was illegal and if, I know it's in real time. It's hard to make those decisions in a split second. But if he could have stopped the match, uh, you know, and I had a few minutes to recover, I don't care about the point being taken away or whatever. But then it could have been a different outcome. Who knows? But yeah, but yeah, for for as, as much as that goes, it it doesn't really bother me. I just I'm just kind of looking forward, moving past that, and uh, just working on my my health and working on myself. And then uh, I'll, I'll get back in there and. Uh, I'll, I'll be back to where I was at. Yeah, man. We can't wait to see you back. Yeah, uh, obviously that was very recently. Looking back towards your sort of early life and your background before you started competing in MMA, you were studying psychology in college, and there's been there's been very few fighters, maybe yourself, Rich Franklin, uh, Shane Carwin, that have went from sort of having an academic background and then moving towards fighting. Do you think that that sort of background helped you in MMA um, in any way? And like, what was it that you, you what made the decision? Obviously, that you wrestled your whole life. Well, I, I saw that you wrestled for like fourteen years by that point. Um, what made you decide to move from that sort of academic field towards something as contrasting as MMA? No, 
it's uh yeah but I've, I've always been a huge fan of the sport and uh you know just from my wrestling background and uh you know there's really nothing left for for me like i i when i wrestled in high school junior college and at the four-year level as well and uh you know you can train for the olympics that's like the only other step you could do but mm-hmm. um man i i've always been a fan of it and i've wanted to you know i wanted to test myself i feel like uh I started going to Uriah's gym back when he opened it in 2006 and uh, because I wanted to fight. And then I went away to school, came back, and even knowing that, like, I went away to school because I wanted to get my degree. I wanted to wrestle because I knew I was going to come back to fighting and I would only get better at wrestling, which would translate into the fight game as well. And uh, I don't know, I just picked things up really easy. And, um, you know, I... I don't know. I just, I, I just love it, just because it's literally just, it's kind of like wrestling. You know, it's just me and one other person. It's, it's not a team sport. I rely on myself, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. It's just, it's, so uh, sure. it, it's just a crazy little, uh, it's a crazy game. You know, it's like yeah. you can have the, you know, like they always say, the highest highs, lowest lows, and, and mm-hmm. that's a, that's a hundred percent true statement right there. But you know, I'm, I'm just content with. I want to. You know, the, the lifestyle I love, too. It's like I, I don't have the same, you know, eight to five job. You know, it's different, a little different every day. And then it's just the reward that I'm chasing. You know, it's just being able to do what I want and just, you know, compete at the highest level. And, and if you, you do well in the sport, you know, then there is, you know, money made as mm-hmm. well that I yeah. can uh, set up my, my family and everything uh, and then future. So that's kind of why I, I love it. And I'm going to keep on going until the, the wheels fall off. <laughs> Perfect, man. That, that's that's what you you want to hear from a fighter. But um, you touched on it um, a minute ago. There, uh, something I wanted to ask. One of my favorite fighters of all time, Uriah Faber. I, I can only imagine what it's like, you know, being able to train with that man. But how how much of an influence has he been on your career? Yeah, he's a huge influence. Uh, you know, he's he's such a he's a good guy. He's a yeah, great in the community. Hello. But help people, he's a great mentor. You know, it's kind of like, if anything, he's someone that I would like to follow in his footsteps. He's not only, uh, you know, being a Hall of Famer, he's a he's a smart man, entrepreneur. He's a uh, he's just all around good guy. So he's he's literally always there to help. If, if you know, if, if any of our teammates needed him or anyone just on the team, and that's not even people competing at the highest level. He'll yeah. He'll, corner people that are having their first amateur fight he'll fly in and drive two hours to hold the bucket you know what i mean he's just uh he's just he's an awesome guy and uh yeah definitely someone to uh follow in his footsteps and yeah i appreciate him I yeah for everything he's done for me yeah you know obviously from the fan standpoint we can obviously don't get the experience like you do but you know from what you said there we can see that uriah faber has honestly got a heart of gold and you know i can only imagine how good he would be to work with but uh you know, uh, another fight I wanted to bring up is uh, your Ricardo Lamas fight. You know, for as for as long as that fight lasted, uh, you know, you're showing off some beautiful boxing that led into that high rate real KO. Um, with that fight, uh, sorry, with that fight being short notice and coming up against one of the best in the division, going into that fight, were you looking to make a statement? And was that one of the more satisfying wins of your career so far? Yeah, I, I would definitely say that was. Uh like the, the biggest win in my career so far and, and satisfying just because he's been at the top of his game for so long. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he, he is one of the best in the world and, and he's gone with the best fighters in the world. Like he went 25 minutes with Jose Aldo. He went yeah. Yeah. distance with Max Holloway. And I don't know. I, I just knew eventually like our, cro- our paths would cross. And, and, and I, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I can beat, I can beat anyone in that division. And that's the reason why I made, uh, made the drop down there and and uh you know it's it, it'll come I'll, I'll get right back to where i was at i just had a, a little minor setback in my last fight mm-hmm. but it could have gone either way and uh yeah so I, i'm i'm looking forward to uh much bigger wins than that that's for sure yeah saying that yeah obviously you've been extremely dominant throughout the vast majority of your mma career and you're currently right ninth in the division Obviously, the division, as you know better than anybody, is stacked with like killers from top to bottom. Anybody could be anybody in a given day. My question is now that you are kind of reaching that recovery stage where you're back into practice and you're starting thinking about getting back to a fight in the UFC, is there any 
particular fight that you're looking for, or are you just kind of ready to take whoever the UFC is wanting to put in front of you? Yeah, it's really whoever they're putting in front of me. I'm not the person that's going to call people out, you know what I mean? If uh, if they would give me the fight I want, of course, I would, I'd pick the champion every time just because mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah. I want to become the champion. But uh, as far as that goes, I'm not going to call anybody out. Um, and, I, and I never have, and the UFC will usually just give me a, a call and and uh, you know, ask me if I want to fight this person, and, and you know, the the answer has been yes every time. So uh, I'm just curious who who they're going to throw at me uh, next. You know, when I when I get back in the mix, I've already uh, my managers have talked to Shelby, and we're already uh, started finding me opponent just because uh, I would like to fight in the spring. That's my my goal, but uh, we'll see who they they offer, or who they throw out. Yeah, nice one, man. Nice. Um... Yeah, so another question I, I had for you was, uh, it's actually news um, recently coming out of your gym, and that was Sage Northcutt, uh, who has been recently left the UFC and signed with one championship. Is Sage a guy that you've worked with in the gym? And obviously, you know, yourself being very well, like being a veteran of the game, I'd assume you'd be a great training partner for him. And do you think the UFC has made a big mistake by letting him go? Because it, Sage, is, he, he's had a really decent career in the UFC so far. And I, I personally think it was a big mistake letting him go, but, you know, I could definitely see him being back here in the future. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, Sage is a, he's, he's a, you know, kind of what you see is what you get. He is really, uh, and he's one of the, the, seriously, the nicest people I think I've ever met. And I, <laughs> I've told this story before. It's uh, when he came down, this was a while ago, maybe a year ago, I remember him and I were sparring. And uh, I remember I hit him with a jab. You know, like the fast, stiff jab, and he literally, right there, like complimented me in the middle of us sparring. He's like, "Man, that was a nice jab." I was like, <laughs> I, I, "I thought it was." I was like, "What the hell?" I thought it was kind of crazy, but he literally, he, 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 everyone's nice, but he is like the nicest guy ever. And uh, no, but as far as that goes, he's he's super talented. He's he's young. His his striking is you know phenomenal. He's he's so fast. He's uh, explosive. He's strong. And since he's been with us, his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu is getting better and better. So I, I think the whole thing with uh, the UFC, I could definitely see him coming back. But but I but I do think it was uh, more of a, a money issue. You know, I, I yeah. think uh, he went out. He was a free agent. He went out, tested his uh, tested the waters, and and I think you know they offered him the most money. So I, I think he he went he took it. I, I'm not sure like the details of everything if the UFC. Um, had a chance yeah. to, you know, pay him the same or more. I, I, yeah. I don't know any of that, but I, I just think it is kind of where you're going to get paid the most, and and, and he took uh, what sounded the best to him. So, yeah, for sure, man. I I I got really excited when I seen him join your gym because I think it's honestly the most perfect place for him because someone who's literally grew up only striking to go to Team Alpha Mill. I mean, you know, it's the best place for him, isn't it? But, yeah, no, and I, I, I totally so, agree with all like the the wrestling. Like his, his striking is like on another level too, you know. So it's uh, and he is he's really fast and explosive. So I, I think coming to Team Alpha Male was a great decision because if he can get he's still develop developing. He's so young. So if he can get his his wrestling and his grappling, you know, up to par with his striking, man, that guy will be unstoppable. For sure, man. For sure, Josh. I honestly, uh, we really do appreciate you coming on. Um, but before I let you go, can I get a few fight predictions off you? What's that? Uh, but I said uh, thanks very much for coming on. We really appreciate it. But um, before I let you go, could we get a few fight predictions uh, oh, from yeah, you? For sure. For so sure. Uh, first one, something that I think that you'll probably be looking very close to: uh, Max Holloway versus Brian Ortega. Man, it's uh, I think that's it's a it's a tough fight, but I, I would have to go with uh, Max Holloway. You know, it's uh. He, he's well. He's super well rounded. That he's a champion for a reason. He's beat, yeah. you know, the, the pound for pound great Jose Aldo twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, you can never count Brian Ortega out. He's uh, he seemed to like prove everyone wrong over and over again. And you know, of course, his, his jujitsu is on another level. So it's like, if it goes to the ground, uh, he always pulls off some slick submission. Even when he's losing the fight, you know, he, he he'll catch all the, you know, sub people in third. So. Mm-hmm. It, it is kind of a, a coin flip to me, but I, I would have to, if I was betting on it, I would have to go with uh, Max Holloway. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> can't go wrong with Holloway. Uh, 
Apart from that, in in the lightweight division, there's Kevin Lee versus Ali Aquinta. I mean, I think that's going to be a great fight. How do you think that's going to go? Man, that's a that's a that's a good one too. I'm looking forward to uh, both great great fighters, both of them. I, I know Ali Aquinta's beat him before, and uh, and I I don't know. I I, I kind of feel. He's evolved a lot, Kevin Lee, hasn't he, since that first Ali Quinta fight? What's that? Uh, Kevin Lee, he's he's evolved quite a lot since the first Ali Quinta fight, so it, it'll be yeah, yeah, a good matchup. No, they got got a lot better, but then you even see how good Ali Quinta is going to five rounds with the beat. Yeah, for you know, sure. Like, they're, they're they're both great fighters, good strikers. They have knockouts, you know, submissions. You know, uh, Ali Quinta's under Matt Serra. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of just feel like Iaquinta's going to pull off a, a win. It's just like he's a pressure fighter, and he'll just keep coming and coming. But, you, you know, Kevin Lee has the power, and they're both they're, they're great wrestlers as well. So I think that's going to kind of negate the wrestling. Um, and it, and I, I believe it will be kind of more of a stand-up fight. So it's kind of who can land first, who can land the bigger shots. But I, I, I kind of think Iaquinta's going to yes. pull it off again. He, he has a win over him, and, and that may play into uh, kind of a little bit of a like mind games and stuff like that but but yeah we'll see i am excited about that fight, so. yeah but yeah that would definitely be a good one and uh the last prediction that we want to ask you for is the uh, alexander gustafson versus john jones and um i don't know let's see i would have to say uh i, I do believe when they fought the first time i thought gustafson pulled that off i, I agree. thought he uh yep. I, I thought he won that fight but then again jones is you know he's still young. He's developing uh, over the years since they they fought last, and he, he's just so good. So I, and I I'm I'm going Jones on that. I think I don't believe it'll be uh, the same fight as the first one. I think I kind of believe Jones is just gonna outclass him, and I, I feel like he has something to uh, to prove too. You know, coming yeah, back sure. and he's yeah. been working hard, and and, and you see the uh, the little thing Gustafson put out about how he's gonna you know beat him and, and Jones replied and this is a month out yeah. so he's probably motivated more than ever and I, I'm going with Jones on that fight as well yeah you, you can't you can't expect I mean you can expect that fight to be better than the first because they both evolved so much and yeah man that, that'll be a really good scrap uh, Josh thank you very much for coming on as I said we appreciate it and we are both looking really looking forward to your comeback next year and you take it easy my friend alright cool thanks again you guys I appreciate, appreciate it you guys have a good one See you there. All right, take.